Hi everybody. Um, I hope you've enjoyed previous FGS TV broadcast. And so this one's a little bit different. Usually we've got people from the industry, which I suppose we have today. Um, but we've got quite a lot of young people working for us at FGS, and Ted being one of them. And as you can see by the name, he's my son. Uh, and so, and he's Ted's worked. How long have you worked for me now, Ted? Uh, I joined of September 2018, it would have been. so. Right, okay, so pushing two years. Yeah, almost two years. I was, I pretty much just turned 18, I think. Yeah, because you're, you're quite a youngster I'm every a young year. One. Yeah, so August really the thing we want to talk about today is the industry as much and what, and what it gives, what, you know, the, the medium-sized partners in this, you know, in this industry give, what opportunities there are. And a really a little bit of uh, how you've got on, how you see it, how you see the future, um, and what you've got from it. So it's not going to be the usual talking about the new normal, talking about security and that. This one's going to be slightly different. Just fancy a bit of a change. Yeah, <coughs> can't personal. do everything. A little bit personal, yeah. So, so you've been in the industry just under two years, as you said. Yeah, just under two years. Clearly, I'm going to know the answer to quite a few of these, but not some of them yet. You can pretend. Yeah, so, yeah, is, this, yeah, is this your first job, Tim? <laughs> well, uh, it's first full-time, proper nine-to-five job up in the city. Before, I worked as a waiter in a local restaurant, which I, I, I did enjoy, but I needed to obviously step up my career. And that was during A-levels and stuff. So I was revising for my A-levels, so I had to find a part-time. But yeah, first time. First time up in the big world, so yeah. yeah. Revising for your A levels, not something that I remember actually, Ted, to be quite honest. <laughs> but but there we are. Yeah, but, like, on a serious note, though, and we know we did discuss this a lot. You did really well in your A levels, yeah. Yeah. You you got A's and B's in, in your A levels, so you could have gone to pretty much one of the top stream universities. Yeah. Uh, so why not? Uni, tell us why you, you didn't. You chose not to go to uni because so many companies in my, you get so many companies have grad schemes, and unless you're a graduate, you can't get to the next level. You you think you've got a ceiling there. Yeah. Um, for my day, so few people went to university, but now I think it's fifty percent or something of that. Yeah, it's around fifty percent now, I think. Yeah, especially for you know from Essex and stuff like that. That's even higher. You know, that's a higher fifty. So I expect yeah. most of your friends win. So why why not university? Yeah, well, I think I think one of the biggest reasons was is I felt going through the education system and in secondary school and sixth form, I found myself looking. I I was doing more education. I felt myself outside with things that I found interesting and enjoyed learning about, opposed to the things that were given to me and forced to learn. And what I thought I carry. Pardon. What sort of things? Well, I used to, like, watch, I, I watched quite a lot of like physics. I got really into my physics and technology sort of stuff. So I watched loads of videos and it wasn't like sat down revision learning, but I'd like read a lot, look at a lot. I read quite a few books and I got really into my reading. But the reason I didn't go to uni, I think was I really wanted to get more experience than just up down on paper. I wanted to be in a, because I always felt the best way to learn is to really be in the deep end. And I felt yeah. like if I really went in to work straight away, and then I'd get used to that environment and I'd learn a lot more about how like the landscape of business works. And I, I really wanted experience. So that was it really. I felt like that would be better for me than academics sitting down and... Yeah. When, I, when I was younger, I wanted to go to university. Yeah. But it was slightly different in those days, you know. My, my dad sort of pushed me against it because he said that everyone who goes to university is communist, yeah? Probably an old-fashioned <laughs> thought. But, and I did regret it. And, and the bit I regretted was probably the social aspect of it yeah. more than the education. The education I would have just stumbled over. Well, I'm sorry about the cats making quite a lot of noise now. Can you hear it? <laughs> I can hear it shouting. I'm going to put the cat out. Sorry about this. That's okay. Yeah. That's fine. I'll, I'll edit this bit out. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, don't have to get disturbed by cats and doing interviews. Um, 
Yeah, well, I regretted it to that extent, the social side and maybe getting in the cricket team and things like that. Um, but, you know, I started in IT in 83, so we're talking nearly 40 years ago. Uh, and looking back on it, best thing that ever, that I went straight into work. Yeah. Um, but I did miss something, you know. There's no doubt I missed out on some things. But yeah. it did allow me to go on some really good holidays with my mates. Yeah. Uh, and have a bit of money behind me doing it. Now, is there anything you regret on this decision, Ted, of not going to uni? Um, I think in terms of that, you probably... I wouldn't say I regret it. Obviously, I'm aware that I missed out on probably a bit more of a crazy social side. Yeah. But I think from going to work and not going to uni, I've spent a lot more time learning how to make myself a more independent person. And I've realised that I, I've actually started to know that yeah. when you like work hard, and get things done yeah you can actually like be more productive and you can build yourself and i think i just have a better foundation as an individual than someone who was just going yeah. out i'll end up going out with friends and probably getting drunk quite a lot whereas now i don't so i think really yeah i do i i'm where i missed out on some probably good social side but i i quite enjoy my life now so i don't yeah, really yeah, yeah. regret it I wouldn't no, say no no i can see that i can see that so you're now in IT, Ted. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a, uh, not so much sort of banking IT or whatever. You got the you've got the side working for a partner. You know, working for FGS. Yeah. Um. And, and so we deal with lots of big corporates. What what do you think you've taken away? What, what have you learned over the last two years? Because obviously you were fresh when yeah. you joined. You didn't really know anything. Know a great deal. Apart from what you've learned in economics and you've done IT at A level and everything. So, what some of the things you might have learned over the last two years that you think has really helped, now, not just IT, yeah. but actually maybe on the way you think and things like that? Well, I, I think Good, one of the biggest things I've probably learned is I spent a lot of time, especially when we were up in the city, obviously not currently, but when we were going out and meeting clients or yeah. going out when I was going over to uh, the NVIDIA GTC in Munich, that when I went to, I just, you learn so much more of how to be interpersonal and how to speak. Yeah. To people. Cause at, the, at first when I was meeting them, I think, Oh, these people are going to be like, Oh, it's just a 19 year old boy having a chat to me. He doesn't know anything. But then I realized that like, you can actually have a conversation with pretty much anyone. And that's so important. Just being sociable and being able to talk to people, I've learned is so much more important than a lot of people even realise. Yeah. So that's one of the big things. And also the fact that, like you were saying earlier about how I'm working for a partner, it's because we're kind of like, would you, we could describe it as like a middleman kind of, we like help them out and then push yeah, them without out. without a doubt. Without so a doubt. If, if I worked for the I company, see it's more of an extension of the vendor and an extension of the client. Yeah. That's how I see it, but definitely in the middle without a yeah. doubt. So I learned, I haven't just learned about one company buying off someone else. I've learned what, how our company works, how the distributors work and then the client. So I've learned how like the whole channel works. And that's just such a wide range of information that I've learned bits yeah. about everything. So. I think, I think, yeah, it's like the interpersonal skills and just how business works on a more grand scale has been so helpful because I've learned like the inside of how people, how people just work in business. Yeah. Um, that's what I've learned. Um, yeah. People. And technical knowledge at school, you're pretty much drummed in. If you learn technically, you learn that you'll do well. Yeah. The, that is part of it. Yeah, of course, you need to have some sort of skill set. But yeah. if you've got, haven't got a personality and you can't talk to people, you're not going to get very far. Yeah, and, and, and I remember one of the first weeks you were with us, we did an HP event. There was Mark Armstrong there, who's sort of number two at HP, and Lewis Simmons. These are really big players. Yeah. And, and I could just leave you chatting to them. And I think they were surprised as well. And so, and I was comfortable with that. So that's something that you, you, you had to an extent because you've been to events before. And I think you've really, really progressed with that. You can hold your own, and it makes so much difference, whatever you do moving forward. Um, now, talking about diversity, which I think partners do have diversity because there's so many parts of a partnership yeah. uh, in IT. 
I mean, you think about it. You are you're not, not even twenty yet, Ted. You're twenty two weeks time or so, three weeks time. Um, you've worked in the city for a year because yeah. our office is in the city, in London for the people in city Malta. You, you lived in Malta and worked in our Malta office for six months, and now because of COVID, you've been working from home for the last four months. So. Yeah. And you've had diversity of, of what you've done. And so how have you found to be able to adapt and also live it abroad on yeah. your own? In a, in a, I mean, the culture is similar in Malta, yeah. but it, it's not the same. No, as in every country is different. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think the diversity is... But which one did you like best? We'll ask you that afterwards. So, yeah. Okay, I'll answer that bit last. So I think, yeah, the diversity is really good because it's made you understand that it's not, you're not always just going to be doing the same thing all the time. Like things change and sometimes you choose that and sometimes you don't. And it's just getting used to being able to change your situation and still getting things done in that situation. So I think that's just getting used to change and being able to adapt is such an important thing, especially in like the IT industry, which is continually changing. Like every year there's new things going on and, things are changing everything's changing so i think just learning how to adapt to that because going from london and being used to all the people there knowing everyone to then going over to malta and yeah i knew the guys but i only ever spoke to them on teams for example it'd just be like quick meeting i'd ask for like favor but we never really had like in depth and then going over there working with them and that's a whole new level. We're not just having conversations like before. We were actually having in-depth conversations about tasks at hand and work, etc. So I think, yeah, the diversity was just let, made me learn a lot about getting used to change and adaptation. So yeah. I think, yeah. What about, what about Malta? Did you find Malta? Oh, I, 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 like, I like Malta a lot, actually. I like the, the, the people there are amazing. Like, everyone seems so nice and everyone's always looking out for you. But in terms of work, yeah, it was it was good to go over to there and meet the technical team and like see them hands on and getting taught by them, like with all the coding and everything. It was it was really cool because I I always wanted to know how to code and it would be like I'd watch some videos online, yeah, and you kind of learn but you switch off. But when you've got someone there who's like they're like genius coders, <laughs> know what they're talking about and teaching you, it, yeah. It was really good. It was really good. Yeah. I felt like I learned a lot from that. So, <clears throat> but why did you come back? Well, COVID came along. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that didn't help too much, to be honest. I, I think being out of a foreign country when this was going on probably wouldn't have been the smartest idea for me. So, no, no, no I get that. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that was it, really. But, uh, although you would have had the spring of the summer. Although I would have been the good side of it. Yeah. But, yeah, but all the taxi drivers ever. With the most, a lot of them were English, and they were all like, "You're gonna love the summer. You're never gonna want to come home after the summer." But didn't get to experience that. Experience the summer could have been for the best. <laughs> well, I'll be going back very, very shortly. But you know, on the interpersonal side, I think the trip to Malta helped you tremendously because then you'd go out in the evening with clients that and friends that I've known for for quite a number of years yeah. now, and I, I'm very close to. I, I go out in Malta. Well, I've well, not been over for a little while because of obviously the COVID situation. I go out more to the do in the UK. Yeah. You know, so, so I'm closer to the people there than most of what you say my friends over here. It's just right, the, yeah. way, the way it is. Going out a lot um, more there. So, yeah. 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 yeah so, the culture as well is going out and socialising a lot more. Yeah. They, they're very, very good and, they're, and very respectful, very easy. Yeah. Uh, and just nice people. I just yeah. really enjoy it. The Malta experience, and uh, <clears throat> I would I would go and live there, uh, but my wife she's not so keen because her mum's still alive, and uh, that is not something I'm going to change. Yeah, don't change that. Yeah, no, no, no yeah. I won't change that. It would be a good idea. Yeah, but on the interpersonal side, I think you know, for me, you know, I've been in this for a long, long time, and uh, you know, and I've focused on a certain area of it. And the yeah. personality side, and actually I've got some really great friends. As it happens, it's been through Compaq and HPE now, majority of them. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not saying that is the right thing, but I think when you focus on one thing, so I call it hedgehogging, because if a, 
you know, that's an old book by, I can't remember who wrote the book. But Hedgehog, Hedgehog's got one form of defence, and that's his role up in a ball. Yeah. And that's, that's what he focuses on. That's what he does. A fox, maybe 20 different ways. Wiley, got lots of ideas, but can't break that down. So concentrate on one thing. Uh, and for me, it's, it's, it's worked brilliantly for me in my life. Yeah. And that HP relationship has come from that. And so occasionally I have a little delve here and there and you know, might be, look at something else. But I always go back to where I feel very comfortable, that interpersonal skills and be able to know all these people. And I've met some great people. Unfortunately, so many have stayed at HP. They're like yeah. the Lewises, like the Mark Armstrongs, <clears throat> like the Nick Shuttleworths and Paul Stagg and all these sort of people. And it's great. And there's, as account managers at HP, I think I've really, really liked. One's just actually sent a message, Ted. They said to how impressive it was. I think it was me more than you, but no, I think it was you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah, well, I've been watching. So, it, the interpersonal thing, I, you can't buy that. No, you, you, yeah. You, you no, can no work one can it. teach you that. You have to teach, no it teach it yourself. You either got it or you haven't, mm -hmm. and then you can develop it in a, just a natural way. Yeah. And uh, being liked and being, no one, no one likes to be disliked. No, yeah. Well, maybe some do, but I can't imagine. They might say they do, they don't care, but I can't believe it. So, Katie Hopkins. Katie Hopkins seems to <laughs> do things to be disliked, yeah. Yes, which yes. Is, yeah. But it also makes some people really like her. Yeah. So with true. the people that she's bothered about, they probably like her more, but the rest of the world don't. But, very much, maybe, yes. but yeah, yeah, Katie Hopkins is a is an example. That's a quite a good example, Ted. Quite impressed, mate. Yeah. So, what next for you? Well, I think I've learned a mate like a massive amount just from a short period. It's well, less than two years is quite a short period in terms of yeah, career. Yeah, it is. Like I'm not even twenty years old yet, and I've learned so much. And I think. I think my next steps is, well, I've got, so, like, I want to finish off the projects I've had here and get everything down like the well, what's your main, What are your main projects that you've got at the moment? Well, my my main project is getting our company certified with ISO 9001. That's pretty much my biggest one. Building that up from scratch to that was actually probably the biggest learning curve I've ever had because when yeah. we first started, I didn't really know what was going on. And now ISO just lets you learn how a company works from top to bottom really so mm -hmm. that's that's been I learned so much from that and i think and that's I, all of the business or just part pretty much all of the not so much the finance financing but in terms of yeah. organizing people and organizing yeah. just how a company works yeah as i think that's where it, i've learned the most so i think i've what i want i'm aware now that at my age i am in a position where I can take, I can afford to take risks. I don't have, I don't have a house to pay for. I don't have family and a mortgage and bills, as to say. So, I think now is my time to take. Hopefully, you've got a family, Ted. Well, I have a family. So you haven't got your I, own family, yes. yes but I, I don't yeah. pay for. Oh, so you haven't disowned me yet, no? No, I, I'm not. No, don't worry. I'm not disowning anyone. <laughs> yes. I, don't, I don't have to financially look after you guys. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Like, so I think now's my best time I can take risk. So I think I've learned enough that I want to take, put myself in the deep end a bit more. Yeah. See if I can set up my own thing. And I think I've got that entrepreneurial spirit from you, probably from like day one, yeah. really. You've yeah. been like your own boss and everything. And I've just, I think that's what I want. I've, I've always wanted to do, really, is be my, the leader of my own sort of thing. And, See if yeah. I can get teams together. So I think now, yeah, is probably move on. See if I can see what yeah. I can do. And then, well, I was twenty, just twenty three when I set my first business up. So you'll be beating me. Yeah. But you've also got the the legacy to me will be get from the start to the end via so nine thousand and one, understanding it, yeah. starting up the twenty seven thousand and one, which should be, so once we certified that, off you go set up your business. But you've also got probably the added side that we'll be asking you to help us as well. Yeah. Yeah, to, to on the ISO, keep that up to date, things like that. So there'll be revenue streams there. But uh, Ted, I know this seems like a bit of a Stroud congratulations little uh, channel chat. So this won't be the same every week. But I just thought, make it a little bit different, yeah. a little bit personal this time. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of what FGS has achieved. But I'm proud of actually what Ted's very much of what Ted's achieved. He's gone... 
you know, you were a bit rabbit in the headlights at the start. Cool. It didn't take you long, and then you became so very productive and doing the internal IT, doing coding, doing the website, you know, doing go from Exchange to Office 365, doing all of that. At that age, utilising the skill sets around you, we've got some cracking skill sets in the business. Uh, it's been brilliant. So, obviously, I'm going to say best of luck for the future, because clearly I will. But I know it's going to be very successful for you, and you've been successful for us. Been a great employee, so we've got a few months left until we get the ISO certified. So it might be three, four months, I think, uh, and then we'll go from there. But Ted, thank you very much indeed for your time this afternoon. Oh, thank and you uh, yeah, and um, I will speak to you later. Yes, I will speak to you yeah. really right shortly. And on that note, on that bombshell, as they say, we shall uh, uh, reconvene next week. All right then, everybody, right. take care. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.